Yo, it's Tuesday the 31st of January 2023. I'm on my way to the IPA World Championship. Yeah, it's gonna be a bit of a weird one this. I've not really played, I've played four times since Christmas. Quite unwell. I haven't even booked a hotel for this. I have no expectations. It's weird, I've been queuing well, but I've just not been able to play for very long or not been able to concentrate. So it's gonna be a weird tournament this one because I could potentially play really well. I've been queuing really well for like a month or I could just lose in the first round. Neither of which would be unexpected. <laughs> um, so we'll see got a match on at five o'clock it's like 2 30 something like that i was going to play this one match and if i win it i'll figure out what the bloody hell i'm going to do after that but until then no expectations i'm not putting any pressure on myself if i did win my first match I'm, they haven't scheduled the second matches yet but if it's like in the afternoon tomorrow i could drive home and then drive back up in the morning so so yeah it's gonna be a weird one today don't really, really know how it's gonna go it's gonna be a long match but like, i might be queuing all right but i don't know if i could sustain playing potentially 35 frames and i've got the energy not really sure what's gonna happen yet no i'll just stop at the services it says i'm gonna get there at half four it's been such a slow journey to do my nut i just bought myself a subway um i think the traffic's getting quite bad now so i'm gonna to have to just get straight on the road and just try and sort myself out in a panic in the last five minutes before i play gonna be fun uh, it's just wall to wall flipping traffic for the last 40 minutes i'm literally gonna be that look i'm eight minutes away i'm gonna be like five minutes early it's a bloody nightmare i'm gonna stuck my top on and i've got one shoe on while i've been sat with all these traffic lights it's been so long Oh, that was ridiculous. I'm on in seven minutes. I've still got to use the loo and put a shoe on yet. Oh, panic sort of trying to get into, into the building. Oh, I don't normally like this venue, but I'm normally not in five minutes before my game. There we go. Just won my first match, but I'm not on again until 6.30 tomorrow, so I think I'm going to go home. Something to wonder about. Cool. The table was just on. Yeah. Sessions ended. We Kieran K, great player. You are a great player in the making. Last few, couple of games on, I think there might be another session at eight, but we're on at the moment, so I'm going to head off. All right, what's eight o'clock now? I'm just going to change the shoes, spare this top so I can wear it again tomorrow. Yeah, it's a bit of a weird game. I'm not. I'm clearly not fit to play. Come over horribly exhausted and I know they're driving out, but there's just such long matches. I started out okay. I was a bit nervy because I didn't know I was gonna play, so I was a little bit shaky, but I was queuing really well. Look, I played okay in spells, but I just kept doing it, dipping in and out of being like feeling exhausted and and shaky and um so I'm still not quite right. And we'll see how it goes tomorrow. Maybe I'll feel a bit better tomorrow. I don't know. Um yeah, I'm booked a hotel. I don't see the point. If I'm not on till 6.30, I don't see the point of hanging around here. I might as well, you know. It's only about 50 quid for a round trip to drive here and back. It's only two and a half hours, so I'm better off just driving home, going to sleep in my own bed that I know I'm going to sleep all right in. I wouldn't have to leave again until, like, I don't know, two or something. Yeah, I did all right, though. Well, nothing to write home about, but the other guy was okay, but I was better. I was just better than him, basically, so... Um, yeah, so I guess I'm happy, but tired, very tired, home time. <laughs>
Right, it's two thirty uh, on Wednesday. The was it first of February? First of February. Time to get my ass back down the commentary and play my second round match. It's supposedly going to be on at six thirty, although they haven't actually got the draw on there. So I've just been and had um, some lunch and um, went and did twenty minutes on the practice table, giving a ripe. So not going to get any better anytime soon. So we'll see how it goes. Well, I've just arrived. It's five thirty exactly. So supposedly it's going to be six thirty, but they, have, they still haven't updated Q scores. So I don't really know if that match is going to go on at six thirty at all. This always looks quite nice at night. I wonder if my camera's got crap on it. Let's go back. Oh, that was a bit bad. <laughs> I really like this venue. Always, um, it's the closest one to my house. It's still like a two and a half, three hour drive, though. Pain in the arse living on the south coast. <laughs> A little interview -y bit. Oh, I'm back in the car. It seems weird to feel so utterly apathetic about such a big tournament, but I'll do it at the moment just because um, I don't know. I just don't know if I'm going to play well. I'm, I'm like, no, I'm queuing well, but I just don't know if I'm going to be able to keep it up. Oh, who knows? Anyway, I've got a sleeping bag I brought with me just in case. I'm going to eat my sandwich. And I've got like 40 minutes, five minutes or something. I'm just going to get changed and then just like lay under the sleeping bag and have a bit of a break, try and tune out from the world for a bit. Right, 6.15. I've just been watching Joshua Filler finish his um, first round game in the Nine Ball World Championships in Poland, which happens to be on concurrently. Still no update on Q score, but I'm told it's going to be on at 6.30. So phew, I don't know what's going on with that. I'm going to go and use the bathroom again, just to be sure. And then... Um, just go and wait out inside the playing area. I figured out why it wasn't updating. They've redrawn the next round in a completely different Q score thing. So apparently I'm actually playing Colin, a guy called Colin Finn, who I don't know, as opposed to Kian Monaghan, who I thought it was going to be. So yeah, we're on in a couple of minutes. Let's do this thing. Good to go. Right, I just booked a hotel. I'm staying at the same place that um, Mike and Caroline are. Um, so I haven't actually got them in the footage yet, but I'll say hello to them. So I'm going to whiz over there and then I'll try and summarise this uh, match before I go to bed. I'm uh, just arriving at the Royal Court Hotel. Which I've no idea what it's going to be like, but it cost 85 quid for the night, so I better be all right. Oh, reception seems all right. Love you here, though. <laughs> well, I don't know if I'm being dense, but I don't seem to be able to work out how to put the lights on. Doesn't seem to be one of those little things to slot your card into. So why is there no lights in here? Uh, maybe this lamp works. Ah, all right, okay. All right, so that, that clearly doesn't work, but everything else, the lamp does, that'll do, whatever. Oh, that seems all right. A bit old fashioned, but it does the job. As long as the curtain's shut and the bed's sleepable, we're all good. The bathroom seems nice. I'll tell you what, one thing I do have, which I don't normally get, a bath. I might actually have a bath. I can never ever get in a bath because I'm too tall. Uh, so I can actually fit in this one. It's good. Mm, this could get annoying. I hope this doesn't last too long. All mm. oh, right, we're all tucked up in bed now. It's like half twelve or something. I mean, just to match that one. Started out terrible. I just um. Because I was on the back of just like waking up and just all that travelling, my head felt a bit fried. I really struggled to concentrate for that first set, and I, I messed up a few chances. Um, lost that set four 0 but I kind of kind of knew that I wasn't. I knew that I was queuing well, and it was just my concentration, so I kind of didn't really let it worry me. I went on a run of winning ten frames on the trot. I started I just kind of sort of shook myself out of it. I started playing really well, like the second set. I broke and run two games, and I tried. That's annoying, just flush the toilet, that noise is annoying. Yeah, I broke and run two games and I ran out the other two games from one from a dry break and the other from a miss. So I basically won that set in four visits. That's pretty good. I reverse cleared the next game to win nine on a trot. Then I won the next one after a bit of a tactical battle. So I won ten on the trot. I won two sets back to back, four nil, and then I won two games to go two sets up and uh, two sets to one up and um, two frames up. And then I don't know what happened. Like the, like the wheels fell off. I just had a, like a little run of about 
20 minutes, half an hour, where everything I did went wrong. I can remember one of the times I went for a clearance and I had to leave myself a really thin black in the middle pocket. I skimmed off a red and a bloody white went in, so I gave that game away. And then, like, almost like the next game, I played a shot where I had to develop some balls and I potted a yellow and screwed back off the black and the black went across the table, potted a yellow that was the other, over the other pocket and then followed it in. Even though that yellow was like six inches out from the pocket, it's like a skill shot. Like, so I lost that one. So like, I got to the point where like I lost that set for free, and I think the guy he didn't even do anything. I like gave like three of those games away. Ah, uh, so that was frustrating. And then, and then like it got to like the deciding set, and I still thought, well, sh well, he hasn't done anything at all to earn those games, so I still should win. And then he started out well. I think he went one nil up, maybe two nil, something like that. Again, I went for a couple of time clearances. Every time I went to try and do anything, it went wrong. But like, I wasn't like missing or anything. It was just like, just one of those times where like all the rolls went tits up. Every time I developed the ball, I'd push another ball safe or I'd just, I'd develop it. I'd try and develop it, but it just still wouldn't go or something like that. Oh, I just wasn't, I was having a nightmare. So I ended up going like 3-1 down, race of four in the last set. And um, I went for a clearance and then got ended up screwed again. So I left one yellow on the table. And then he tried playing a snooker. And I managed to play a, an escape from the snooker where I nestled in behind the yellow. It was a really tough shot, but I got it spot on. He got back out the snooker and he left me a double on the yellow. So I managed to double the last yellow and pot the black. In the next game, I think I might have broken and potted the white or something like that. So he went for a clearance, but he left himself an awkward last yellow down the rail with all my reds there and he just hung it up but his ball was over the pocket so I couldn't really do a lot I played a snooker he, he came off a side cushion potted his yellow but he didn't get a shot on the black um, in fact he snooked himself on the black managed to clear those balls up and then thankfully in the last game he broke and potted the white and I was gifted probably the easiest clearance I could possibly have had it was real dot to dot which is all what, which is what I needed because every time I tried to do anything it was just coming out wrong from looking like I was going to go down 4-1, then 4-2, and ended up winning it 4-3. Oh, God knows how it happened. It was a real tough game because it was annoying, really. So I was playing so much better than that guy, and he was really, really slow. Whatever happened that meant that I, I lost like a bunch of games where he didn't do anything, it just um, just like changed the dynamic of the match. And I was lucky to get a chance to win it again at the end, really. I went from being flying and stuffing him to like scraping over by the skin of my teeth. Oh, frustrating. Anyway, we live to fight another day, so I'm going to go to bed. I think we're going to try and play a bit of pool tomorrow in a place in Coventry. So I'm not on till three and I've got to get out of the room at by 10. So I'm going to go and pot some balls, me and Mike, and then um, see if I can get myself in some sort of shape. I still feel like I'm playing well, weirdly. I still feel like I'm playing well. Dipping in and out of like concentration because I'm still struggling with my energy levels and um, tiredness. But I was better today. I had a dodgy start, but once I got over that, I played okay the whole way through, really. Anyway, bedtime. Nighty night. Uh, day three, was it Thursday? Is it the second? Just about ready to go. It's quarter to ten. Didn't have the best night's sleep. It was bloody cold in here overnight. I've only got this tiny little radiator. Yeah, I've only got that tiny little electric radiator to try and heat the room up, and it doesn't really do a great job. That's supposed to be a pool place that opens at nine o'clock, so I might go and check that out. Pot a few balls, chill out for a bit, and then uh, head to the venue at like two, maybe something like that. No, we'll see. I'm just gonna go and drop my stuff off in the car. This seems all right. Oh, well, apparently I picked a great spot to park in. Bird shit alley. <laughs> Fuck's sake. And the annoying thing is, not one sodding bird. At least I could have thrown a stone up there and got my own back. Ugh. Absolutely all over it and all over the windscreen. I like text Snooker Club and get the fuck. Nah, I didn't like it in there, a bit too clicky. Mm, you can never get bloody served. What's the flipping point? 12.45, I'm gonna like, head over towards the venue now, maybe get something to eat there and then just kind of chill out for a bit. Didn't play very well, but who cares? Who cares, honestly? It's not the game. The game is all that matters. We'll see. Well, I just had a KFC. I'm back at the venue now, so I just got 1.30. I need the loo, and then I'm going to have a break in my car, I think. I just feel a bit knackered. knackered. Then I'll go and watch the pool before I get going. 
<laughs> I was like right zoomed in on your face. <laughs> Well, my world championship's over. Yeah, I lost, lost a bad match, really. Played Richard Swaffield. Started out flying out of the gates. Won the first nine frames on the trots. Two sets to nil up, was flying. And then he won a game. And then just from then on, well, from that point onwards, I let myself get rattled by stuff. Like, um, he was coming and checking my rack all the time, which was driving me nuts. And he was just being really slow and bogging the game down. He basically did Mark Selby, what did Mark Selby did to Ronnie O'Sullivan in the 2014 final and I crumbled like he did. Just got so wound up, I was just timing his shots because I remember one visit it took him eight minutes to pop four balls and it was just driving me in my head in. But the thing is, like, it's easy to make excuses. At the end of the day, I lost the game from being two sets nil up and a frame up. And um, there's no really, not really anyone else I can blame but myself. You know, was it to quote the immortal words of Harvey Specter? Winners don't make excuses when the other team plays the game. He played the game and I lost and I let me, let it get to me. So just weakness, weakness. I mean, he was really, really, really slow and I was so out of ribbon. But would Liam Dunster have lost that game from 2-0 up with Mark Farnsworth? No. So you want to be a, you want to be a top player? You've got to beat everyone, no matter what they throw at you. And I did not. Can't even blame the fact that I've, I've been a bit under the weather because I still, I felt okay the whole way through the game. I just, honestly, just rattled myself and just got really, really fed up. I just, it was another one of those things that it just seemed like everything I did didn't work. From that point onwards, I almost never had a chance to run more than a couple of games. Just every single time I tried anything, it came out a bad out outcome probably because maybe a little bit of being out of rhythm maybe lost a bit of touch the feel of the cue ball but it just seemed like um yeah just i kept ending up i would play a shot and it would just i'd keep getting like a springy bounce and it would land in exactly a spot where i was on nothing or i'd try and develop balls and they just land so awkward i just felt like every time i come to the table i was in tr i was in so much trouble Partly because of how he played, which is really well. And partly just because every time I tried something, it didn't come off. But the thing is, earlier on, I was playing unbelievable. He, he said he was shell-shocked after the second set because I basically, apart, apart from the first game where I had a bit of luck and I, I did an unbelievable free ball clearance, I basically just run out everything. Every time I come to the table, I cleared up. I played amazing. I was potting and queuing like a dream. And then the first game, I didn't do that. The match completely flipped. It's almost like I never got a look in after that. It's crazy, really. And it's easy to say, yeah, I got must, I got bogged down and stuff, but so what? You still got to find a way to win. So grow up. Ah, uh, so interesting learning experience. But the good things to take out of that is I'm still feel like I'm playing really well, which is good. It's been like a month. I got a message from a guy called Gareth Manning, who's an ex IPA pro, and he invited me to come and spend a few hours at his house. He's got a pool table in the back, and um, we did a little bit of coaching. But one of the things he said to me was because I told him I'm always playing around with my technique and stuff like that, and he said I cue the ball like a dream and an amazing potter. Stop dicking about with it and ever since i stopped dicking about with it i've played so well non-stop played well at snooker played well at nine ball i won that nine ball tournament and like the weekend after i've just been queuing well non-stop for a month or so so that's been really good like basically since the week before christmas just before i got unwell um even the times that i've come up and practiced my concentration's been all over the place because of being unwell but my queuing has been as good as i think it's ever been so that's something i'm really happy about and also another thing i've been doing is I've tr which kind of was my undoing in this match is i've been trying to play like quick and loose and really fast and just flying around the table and just potting everything because i'm in the i do get the tendency of bogging myself down quite a bit tried hard this tournament to not do that it seems really weird counterintuitive tried hard to not try but i just tried to just let everything glo gloss over me and just get on and just get on with it pot the balls let my cue go really get through the ball and it's got, i'm getting really good results i'm playing really well i'm just a bit unmatched sharp when it comes to the, the games that are going against me I, like my concentration still needs a bit of work I, I find it very hard to maintain that but um the actual for pure cue in the ball i don't think i've ever 
ever had a sustained bout of playing this well for since probably early mid 2000s so that's good news it means if i can put the rest of the game together i could actually be a lot better than i was last season but yeah i did enjoy the tournament and retrospectively i enjoyed the match i kind of in a way i'm kind of relieved now it's over now i'm out of the building I'm like i'm quite happy to be going home now it would have been nice to win but it would have been another night i'd have had to stay in a hotel i don't really have a lot of stuff with me just would have been a bit of a ball ache but it would have been a good win to, uh, match to win as opposed to a bad match to lose but it, it, i had a lot of good stuff in it at the start right job done time to go home thanks for watching <laughs>